Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this session regarding master and working dice manufacturing. I'm Ståle Løkken, and I'm the CEO of Minto Norway. Minto Norway was founded on King Christian V's orders in 1686. Prior to that, Kongsberg as a town was founded in 1624 by King Christian IV, and silver was found in the surrounding mountains. Due to logistic reasons, the king decided co coins should be struck in Kongsberg, and that was the origin of the mint. Being founded in 1686, the Mint is the second longest still existing company in Norway and, as previously stated, we are located in Kongsberg, an hour west of Oslo. The Mint is no longer owned by the King. Since 2015, Samlerus Group has held all shares. Mint of Norway is Samlerus Group's large supplier of medals and commemorative coins. In addition to that, we are competitive on the circulation coin market and have deliveries to several central banks. As a curiosity, I can mention the Nobel Peace Prize has been struck at the Mint since 1902. Being a production site, the need for cost reductions and correct quality levels is obvious. Norway is in a high cost region and the need for automated and standardized solutions is very important. This being the context, a project driven by the urge to reduce cost and standardized quality levels has come up. Tula. Hi everyone, my name is Tula Iversen. I've been working with tooling and technical development at the Mint of Norway for about 12 years. Our target for this project was to improve the quality of our working dice and shorten the lead time. With the right combination of milling strategies and cutting tools, we saw a possibility to reduce the milling time and avoid manual retouching. Manual retouching is time consuming and can easily wear out crucial details in the relief. We also wanted to look at the possibility to cut the dice in already hardened material. This way we will get a more efficient and predictable way of tool manufacturing. The designs we have used, chosen to use for this project is made by the former Norwegian mint chief engraver and artist Eivind Hansen. When we started the project together with Rødersh and Kongsberg Mechatronics, we came up with the idea of also doing polishing of the dice with an automated process. Sparlek had a solution they meant was suitable for dye relief polishing, so they joined the project. Over to you, Oliver. Thanks, Stahl and Toole. We are glad to be part of the project to optimize the production of dyes. But first, I would like to introduce Röders. We are a more than 200 years old, family-owned company in northern Germany. Based for our business was the casting of pewter. Now we are also a big supplier for molds for bed bottles. About 30 years ago, we started to develop and build high-speed and high-precision milling machines. Several of these machines had been delivered to the coin industry, so we know quite well the needs of this business. Based on that, we developed the new approach in this project group, which I want to explain in the following. The new approach was to use standard ball nose cutters to cut um, dies, as they have several advantages, like always the same quality of the tools, they are available at reasonable prices in different sizes. No special knowledge is necessary anymore to grind. The standard tools quite often is used nowadays. Also, hardened steel can be used, which is a very really big advantage. And of course, higher speeds and feeds are possible, which reduces tremendously the machining time. There's one point we have to look on, on the standard bonus cutters. It's the chisel in the center of the tool where uh, the cutting speed is zero and so the cutting conditions are quite bad. For a good quality at milling, we should avoid to cut in this area. And the idea to do so is to do an inclination of the workpiece. If you look on the left, we have a horizontal standard workpiece in the center cutting speed zero, quite bad cutting conditions. If we do like given on the right side, an inclination by some degrees, eight or 10 or 12 um, degrees, we are out of the cutting with the center of the tool. We cut in the radius and there we have cut some cutting speed. So very good cutting conditions, which should lead to good surface quality and of course also good cutter lifetimes. Um, to do so, we need uh, some clamping, which is a little special. You, we see um, a pallet was, was preparated with an angle to hold the workpiece. And of course, also the machine control has to support this. So we need an automatic probing cycle that can probe an inclinated workpiece. And of course, we need also a process processor that prints NC code that automatically shifts 
and tilts the program as we have, of course, a 3D program, a three axis program, and still runs at three axis, but has to be inclinated by the angle of eight or 15 degrees or whatever. Very important for the operator, of course, no manual interaction is necessary. This is fast and, of course, which is also important, fail safe. Now we can have a look on how it cutting is running. We cut with the standard bonus cutters. This leads to an increase of the factor in the machining time by 1.5 to 3. Depends, of course, where you started. You can see on the video we use a standard strategy, so this is barrel uh, for finishing. For deeper cavities, it is a good idea not to use standard copy milling strategies, but roughing strategies which are available in all suitable CAM systems, which leads to better tool life and, of course, lower spindle load and, at the end, um, shorter machining time. Here we see uh, the result of the cutting um, on the bedding metal of Harald and Sonja, diameter 38.61 millimeter. We did it with an inclination of 8 degrees, used uh, three different cutting tools, ball nose cutters, diameter 1, 0.5 and 0.3 millimeter for the final finishing, uh, feet of 350 and the speed of the spindle of 27,000 rounds per minute. At the end of the machining time, which is for the contour a little bit more than six hours, the tool was worn out in a length of seven micron, which is a very good value for this small tool. And um, the used a step over of a hundredth of a millimeter. And the result, you can see that on these photos with a microscope, very homogeneous surface, uh, mean RI of 0.15 micron. So this gives good chances for automatic collision. Uh, some examples we did to show that this is possible on different cavities. Uh, three dies we selected, one big one, diameter 100 millimeter with a release height of 3.6 millimeter. Here we use special roughing strategies to increase tool life and to decrease machining time. The finishing of this big die was 42 hours. And then we did two smaller ones, 38.61 millimeter in diameter, deeper relief 1.6 with a finishing time of 6 hours 49. And the wetting metal uh, with a um, depth of 0.35 millimeter. Here we did only uh, the finishing of the contour in 6 hours and 5 minutes. In the next step, we looked into polishing with the Spalek die finisher, like we can see it also in this um, video. Spalek die surface finishing for bodies as well as for dies with relief preparation and reconditioning. The results are very nice, like we can see on these two examples. So automatic polishing without any many retouch was possible. In detail, we can see uh, this on these two details with microscope on the left, in each case, the mill surface, on the right, um, the mill surface after polishing without any manual retouch. So the surface quality was really good enough to do production of coins, which was done by the Mint of Norway in this example with a silver metal without any manual um, and retouching of the master die and the die. And for the summary, I would like to pass over to Tole. With Röder's high precision milling machine and new milling strategies, we managed to achieve a very high quality surface with a shorter machining time. Combined with Spolix polishing technology, we can polish the relief on a coin and metal dies without any use of manual work or touch by hand. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. We are looking forward to your questions and the upcoming discussion.